Frogs, The Crow, and Tiananmen Square are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is May 13th, 2021. It is the 133rd day of the year. There are 232 days left in this fine year. Today's the 19th Tuesday in the 20th week, and it is the 55th day of spring. There are 39 days left until summer. There are 52 days left until the 4th of July, and I really hope this year we could have some barbecues and get together with friends. Kind of tired of looking at the same people in my house. Today is National Frog Jumping Day. National Frog Jumping Day is on May 13th and we have the history behind how this day started. While the name itself may seem rather vague, its origin comes from Mark Twain's first published short story about a betting man and his pet frog. Did you know there's approximately 7,300 species of frog around the world and the most colorful ones are the most poisonous? Yeah, that's like a good indication that a frog should not be eaten is if it's really bright and looks like it was made out of neon skin or something like that. National Frog Jumping Day is important because it brings literature to life as well as brings awareness to different kinds of frogs and their impact within the ecosystem, which is important. All right, let's see what else May 13th has given us. 1846, the Mexican-American War. The United States declares war on the Federal Republic of Mexico following a dispute over the American annexation of the Republic of Texas and the Mexican military's incursion into the state. 1940, World War II. Germany's conquest of France begins as the German army crosses the Meuse. Winston Churchill makes his blood, toil, tears, and sweat speech to the House of Commons. 1951, the 400th anniversary of the founding of the National University of San Marcos is commemorated by the opening of the first large capacity stadium in Peru. 1954, the anti-national service riots by Chinese middle school students in Singapore takes place. Yeah, middle school students had had enough too. 1960, hundreds of University of California Berkeley students congregate for the first day of protests against a visit by the White House Committee on Un-American Activities. Yes, that sounds very Soviet Union-ish. Un-American Activities. That's something that really doesn't belong in American society. Anti-American things. When you have freedom of the press, freedom of speech, things like that. If you want to voice your grievances against the federal government or the state government or the local government, that's your right. So that's what protesters do. And these guys were calling it un-American activities. That's back in the old days of the Soviet Union. If you were talking bad about the government, you were anti-Soviet and un-Soviet or whatever they wanted to call it. And you went away to the gulag. 1972, faulty electrical wiring ignites a fire underneath the Playtown Cabaret in Osaka, Japan. Blocked exits and non-functional elevators led to 118 fatalities with when many of the victims leaping to their deaths. 1980, an F3 tornado hits Kalamazoo County, Michigan. President Jimmy Carter declares it a federal disaster area. You know, you never hear much about Jimmy Carter when I do these things. He was a pretty low key president and a lot of people consider him one of the worst. A great man. I think he's a wonderful human being, but yeah, I just don't think he did many things that were epic, but it just doesn't seem like he did enough, I guess. I don't know, that's just me. Nineteen eighty nine, a large group of students occupy Tiananmen Square in China and begin a hunger strike. Tiananmen Square is a giant square in the middle of Beijing, China. Actually, the word Tiananmen means gate to heavenly peace. This is the beginning of what became the Tiananmen Square protests and all that. It started on May 13th and really kicked off around May 15th. Students basically had a big sit in and protested in this square. And eventually the Chinese government decided to send the military in, not with tear gas, not with things like this, with tanks and real bullets and killed a bunch of students. They've never officially said how many they did it, but it's known in China as the June 4th massacre. The goal of the students was to end corruption within the Communist Party, as well as democratic reforms, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and freedom of association, democratic input on economic reforms. Of course, none of these things were met, and they just decided to kill a bunch of students instead of, you know, God forbid, releasing a little bit of the power to the people. There was a very interesting thing. I think it was like Nightline or something like that, but Peter Jennings or one of them, actually years after all this happened, uh, rode a bicycle through Tiananmen Square. Now, this is a big place, a lot of bicycles going through there, so he might be able to go unnoticed to a degree. Well, you're not allowed to film there or anything like that because they still haven't covered up all the bullet holes to this day. You can still see them, they say. 
Well, he actually put what looked like a box, like he was taking lunch someplace on the back of a bicycle and someone in front of him had another box similar to that with cameras in them. So they rode through Tiananmen Square to see how it is these days. And while they're going through there, this Chinese man was kind of behind them, you know, on his bike. And he's looking at him, looking at him. And he gets closer, gets closer, taps his finger on the camera like I see it and didn't say anything. Not like he turned him in or anything like that. He just rode on. You know, nothing good happened there when here we are, you know, all these years later, this is 89. And I think that Peter Jennings thing, I might have been Peter Jennings, was probably 10 years ago. And they're still not letting people really film Tiananmen Square. There is a ton more that goes into this and it is actually worth reading. It gets a little confusing and I'll tell you why. They talk about all the people that were involved and I couldn't tell the difference between them. Their names are all the same. And I try, you know, I don't want to sound like racist, but I'm just ignorant to how their names go. And I just got confused and I just remember it being a bad thing. And I remember all kinds of horrible things happening there. It's too bad. I was in the military wall if this is going on and we were getting footage that I don't think uh, the American public was getting and it wasn't good. 2014, an explosion in an underground coal mine in southwest Turkey kills 301 miners. That is a rough job. I don't think I'd ever be a miner. I don't really like being underground. Movies released on May 13th, 1994, The Crow. This was Brandon Lee the son of Bruce Lee's greatest movie and his last movie because he tragically died during the filming of this movie. On March 31st, 1993, Lee was filming a scene in The Crow where his character was shot and killed by thugs. In the scene, Lee's character walks into an apartment and discovers his fiance being beaten and attacked and actor Michael Massey's character fires a Smith & Wesson revolver at Lee as he walks into the room. So basically what happens, they do a couple different scenes and one of the scenes is showing the guy loading the revolver and they're putting dummy rounds in there that look just like real rounds with a tip a lead tip just like a normal bullet that's the projectile that kills you when someone shoots at you right it goes metal flies out of the gun hits you well they load the dummy rounds that have no gunpowder in them and then they'll take those out and they'll load the blank ones so that they get the explosion they're looking for when the gun is fired well what they didn't realize is one of the lead tips of the dummy rounds stayed in the gun so when they fired the blank at him it was a legit blank but it pushed out whatever was in the barrel of the gun and hit Brandon Lee in the abdomen. At the time of Brandon Lee's death, only eight days were left before completion of the movie. A majority of the film had already been completed with Lee and he was only required to shoot scenes for three more days. There wasn't much left for him to do. To complete the film, they used a couple stunt doubles as stand-ins and special effects were used to give Lee's face to the stuntman but because of his death and everything else like that the movie in my opinion it was good don't get me wrong but it did way better in the theaters and made way more money because of the drama that was related to it and brandon lee's death so sad he had a really good future ahead of him Born on May 13th, 1966 darius rucker he's a musician singer guitarist you may not know him he was the lead singer Hootie and the Blowfish. Remember them back in the day? That was a great band. I think they only had like two good albums or maybe one really giant great album and then the rest were kind of mediocre and they eventually broke up and he went his own way. He's a pretty good country western singer. Died on May 13th, 2018, we lost Margot Kidder. You may not remember her, but she played Lois Lane in the Superman movies back late 1970s with Christopher Reeves. She played in tons of other movies. I mean, I was shocked at how many different things she was in, going all the way back to 1968. I mean, The Great Waldo Pepper, 92 in the Shade, then Superman, Amityville Horror, all the Superman, all Superman 2 and 3 and go, so on. Mob Story, White Room, Delirious. In later years, she had been having some mental breakdowns. Back in 1996, she had a pretty well-publicized manic episode in Los Angeles. At the time, Kidder had been working on an autobiography when her laptop computer became infected with a virus, which caused it to crash and basically lose all three years of what she'd been working on. She tried to have it recovered. She flew to Los Angeles to see this computer expert and they were unable to recover any of the data. She lost all of it. She just had a breakdown. She disappeared for like four days and she ended up in some guy's backyard in Glendale, California with no clothes on. Police came and they basically took her to the hospital and she was admitted. She finally came to terms with she did have some mental issues and she needed to be treated. And she went on to have quite a few more good years and then she died in 2018. She started getting getting back in movies, even though she had this episode, and that usually is the death of anyone's career, but she started getting back into movies, and she was doing some independent things, and she was going to Comic Con and things like that because she was a big draw 
for those things when anyone that's into Superman. Sadly, in 2018, nobody had heard from her in a couple days and they found her dead in her house in Livingston, Montana. She was only 69 years old. She was found unresponsive by a friend. The cause of death was initially not released. Her agent said she passed away peacefully in her sleep. Days later, they found out that she'd been struggling all week and she died of a self-inflicted drug and alcohol overdose. She did it on purpose. That's what they figure. It's too bad. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.